I'm Dorothy Sutton. I teach for Metro Early College High School. I teach English, but I um, am fortunate enough to participate in the Early College Experience Learning Centers. My module is created off the data analysis prototype. The product is a data analysis report and presentation. The students work to refine their own questions. They will form their own groups based on the interest and then they do some background research on the topic. Part of the module is the identifying variables and analyzing their relationship. Students work to identify the variables that they found in their articles, their scientific peer-reviewed articles. They write those variables on sticky notes and the author who wrote about them. And then once all of the students have their sticky notes, they arrange them in meaningful groups. What happens next is that the students then refine their research to locate a data source that they want to look into for the the report and presentation. They're going to analyze the population that was the sample, the potential problems in the sample, um, making sure that the sample was collected ethically, and then pick the perfect data set that they then analyze for the end product. They had done background research around a topic, but that topic, of course, the research showed them that there's lots of different things that might be affecting change as it relates to that topic. So what they were trying to do is to, is to group the research findings into specific correlations between dependent and independent variable, which is really a, a tremendous skill that will serve them well in life. When we created this module, a number of the teachers met at Battelle with some of the Battelle scientists, and um, my Battelle scientist works in statistics at Battelle, and was immensely helpful in helping me understand the statistics because as an English teacher, I'm not certified in math, so I don't understand all those parts. So he made that very clear. What we saw in Dorothy's classroom today was really neat uh, because she's an English teacher teaching students how to write scientifically. I think it's brilliant, and she's doing a great job of it. Today we're bringing all our, uh, all our ideas together to build a hypothesis for our paper. We first made our question like what kind of, which wand, like the engineering of the wand itself, will create like the most volumized eyelashes but then so that was too narrow of a topic so then we went to which mascara sells the best and why so that includes one but then you also have like the formula of the mascara the price the different kinds of advertisement because the students are able to individualize their topics it gives them an opportunity to explore their individual interests we had a moment when students started researching that I realized they weren't perfectly prepared to start reading scientific articles. Where a couple students said, you know, I can't do this, I'm not ready, I don't know what you're asking me to do. I take a minute to go through the structure of an article and the language of an article. What do materials and methods mean? What do conclusions mean versus results? What we found is that the students were ready to write well as part of their capstone experience, but not necessarily ready to write at an undergraduate research level. It's important for the students because regardless of which field they go into, they need to be able to communicate clearly, and that means having strong English skills, but also being able to read data and statistics and being able to communicate findings. I think that science means being able to engage in the world around you, being able to ask questions, being able to perform the scientific method, and to go through rotations of questioning and trial and error and then failure and success ultimately. So making students able to encounter tasks that are challenging that they can accept failure, that that's okay because that's one more way that you don't do something um, so that they ultimately will be more successful.